Welcome back friends. Welcome to another video from Shomu's Biology. And in this video tutorial, we'll be talking about the applications of recombinant DNA technology. So we're talking about recombinant DNA technology and the applications of that. We've been talking about recombinant te technology for a long time. We talked about all the basics of recombinant DNA technology, which involves cloning. And we talked about gene cloning, how DNA cloning is done, about the vectors, about the different types of gene libraries, like genomic DNA libraries or cDNA libraries and all the stuff. Now here we'll be talking about the applications of recombinant DNA technology, which makes recombinant DNA technology, it's a blessing to us. The modern day understanding of biology increase a huge amount of chance to talk about and important stuff like the seven points that I've uh, listed here. So first application of recombinant DNA technology is given here is a molecular biology. The use of recombinant DNA technology in molecular biology. And actually we can use recombinant DNA technology in multiple stuff in molecular biology, right? Like different uh, pro properties and experimentation elucidations. Like gene mapping is one of those molecular biological techniques where we use recombinant DNA technology. In gene mapping, what gene mapping is going to tell us where exactly a specific gene is present in a whole genome or in a whole chromosome. For example, in eukaryotes, it's very difficult to know where exactly the target gene, the gene of our interest is present in the whole genome or genomic content. And we can do that using recombinant DNA technology because we can find it, we can map a gene based on different molecular marker based approach. Markers like RFLP, RAPD, AFLP, these are the molecular markers that we use uh, to finally analyze where exactly a gene is present to map and locate a gene in the genome. Second thing, second application of RDT is genetic disorder. Genetic disorder, obviously determination of genetic disorder or identification of a genetic disorder. In most of the cases, what we do in this case, we design DNA probes. We design DNA probes tagged with immunofluorescence or we can tag with any fluorescent dye and we can use this probe to find out any genetically disordered region of the body. If we have a genetic disorder that means the gene content or the gene sequence is slightly changed or modified. Now we can find that by using specific DNA probes designed to bind with those DNA segment of the human body and we can determine that using DNA technology. We can modify that and wherever we use or apply molecular biological techniques or biochemical techniques to modify gene, it is under the part of recombinant DNA technology. Second, uh, the third application of recombinant DNA technology is the production of monoclonal antibody. In the production of monoclonal antibody, we encourage a cell to grow we encourage a hybrid cell to grow where we fuse two different types of cells and that hybrid cell will start creating more and more specific epitope containing antibody which is very much specific to bind with only one type of antigen or antigenic determinants and this monoclonal antibody opens up a new array of biological science in the modern era because this monoclonal antibody can be used as molecular probe as immunological probe to find out proteins, protein-protein interactions, cell signaling pathways. It, it helps in uncovering all these different machineries inside the cell. To find out a specific gene, to find out a specific protein, screening a library and also in immune, immunohistochemistry in a huge amount. Fourth applications of recombinant DNA technology. This is the gene therapy. We can use recombinant DNA technology for gene therapy purposes. In the gene therapy what we do, let's say we have a gene, we have a DNA which is faulty. This is a faulty DNA in our body. Now we know that if we can change this faulty DNA with a good copy of the gene, same gene, the person can be happy, the person can be okay. So what we do is substitute this faulty copy by cutting it out and replacing this region with a better copy of that same gene which we insert from outside. This is the better copy. So this thing can be achieved using recombinant DNA technology because we need to cleave that DNA out and place a new better DNA inside that region. 
recombinant DNA technology. Again, fifth one is the DNA fingerprinting, which is itself a blessing to humankind. Human DNA fingerprinting is hugely important for analysis of fraternity as well as to identify forensic conditions where a sample of DNA can tell and reveal about the crime uh, uh, victim of the, uh, I mean the criminal and differentiation between the criminal and the victim DNA. It's a blessing, it's an important thing not only for the forensic applications and paternity uh, but also it is used for identification of person and that's very very important because like every one of us have a different set of uh, DNA and their genetic makeup so we can find the DNA or genetic makeup of different persons using this DNA fingerprinting that means if you run the fingerprinting of you we have a separate set of list of results or different types of banding patterns now if I run it for in my case we have a separate set so just like the fingerprint which is varied for person to person their genetic content also varies and that helps us to identify that person. Sixth application of RDT is production of vaccines. You know there are different types of vaccines that can be produced. Vaccines uh, that most of the cases are nothing but uh, the attenuated or killed version of that same infective agent. If we add it, if we add an unharmed, uh, in a, uh, I mean unharmed uh, or uh, say disarmed we can say or we can say the killed virus or killed bacteria as the vaccine into in, inside a person's body the person's body will develop a response a immuno immunological response against that virus before so in future if I get the real virus infecting me we already have prepared a lot of immunity we prepare a lot of antibody against that antigen and epitope of that infection so we can fight against that in future that's how we can produce vaccines so we use recombinant DNA technology to produce what is called DNA vaccines because the vaccines are of different types that I've told you like the vaccines can be heat attenuated live attenuated vaccines that means the virus is alive but it is attenuated that means its functionality is slightly destabilized so that it cannot harm us but still can develop an immunogenic response we can have different types like killed virus or killed particles as a vaccine uh, like the fragments of bacterial cell like fl bacterial flagella can act as the antigen to develop immunogenic response on the other hand we can produce a DNA a vaccine where we take the element the sample of the bacterial DNA we cleave it we take that DNA and use that DNA and put it into a vector amplify it in cloning and then we can add it as a vaccine we we deliver it inside our body so that that DNA is recognized by our body as foreign and our body creates an immunogenic response against it seventh application of recombinant DNA technology that is pharmaceutical product productions so production of pharmaceutical products like insulin is a big example of why we use and choose molecular cloning and why it is so important because we already talked about the insulin how we clone insulin gene so that's how we talked about the insulin gene cloning and stuff we do with recombinant DNA technology we recombine specific insulin target gene with the vector DNA and once it's combined with the vector it's now active it can go and and it will involve and it will develop in uh, uh, multiple amount and huge amount of insulin and very few amount of time because earlier days uh, what happens insulin used to extract it from cow uh, pancreatic cells because cow pancreatic cells also produce insulin like human pancreatic cells but the problem was if the cow is infected uh, the insulin that is produced by the cow is also have some problem so if we inject that in our body it will create definitely problems so we don't want that uh, so to minimize that for example a cow can have bovine serum encephalopathy so in those cases it can create harms to a human if we inject that so we want a fresh copy without involvement of anything so we rely on pancre uh, we rely on recombinant DNA technology insulin that acts as a blessing and we can produce huge content of insulin very very fast using the cloning as well as the expression vector in this purpose so it's not it I 
I could write more, but uh, my whiteboard ends here. So that's why I'm stopping it. But these are the major applications of recombinant DNA technology uh, that we can have. So you can see many more technologies, many, many applications if you find in internet. But these are the major and basic ones that we uh, love about recombinant DNA technology. So if you like this series of recombinant DNA technology videos, and by the way, if you if you don't see my earlier videos, please watch them. There are the links in the description. Just click it and watch it. Just like this, you will also like those videos. And if you like this whole series, please hit the like button that's here as well as uh, on the bottom, as well as at this side, everywhere. Just click this and uh, to get more and more videos like that, subscribe as well as like, hit the like button to my uh, channel. Uh, because it helps me uh, growing and it helps me making more and more videos for you guys. Thank you.